Dear Diary, Ah, Christmas Eve, a night that holds so much meaning for these mortals. A time to reflect upon the past, dwell in the present, and tremble at the future. It's all so quaint, so human. How they delude themselves into thinking that time flows in a neat and orderly fashion. One event leading predictably into the next. As if their actions were mere pebbles in the great stream of life. They cannot begin to fathom the weight of their decisions. The ripples they create grow into so much more than they can imagine. Mortals have the luxury of ignorance. They can make their choices and move forward, blissfully unaware of the consequences that will haunt them. I must admit, even of that, I am jealous. To live with immortality as I do is to see not ripples, but waves. Each choice clashing against the shore, reshaping it, eroding it, until there is nothing left but my design. And we begin in uh, London. We last left off with Big Ben getting chopped up. And you guys hurrying down the streets to Ebenezer Scrooge's house. A task that would have been difficult uh, had it not been for uh, a snow slowly falling on Christmas Eve. But in the distance, you see a thick blanket of it and a howling of wind. You all are going to be making your way closer and closer to it. Uh, at which point you notice basically a full wall of snow is swirling in one of these downtown streets. You're down uh, Old Street. Um, and there's a person there you recognize. It is Detective or Inspector Lestrade. Uh, as he... Uh, is sort of farrowing people out of the snow away from the building. Um, he is going to see you all come up and go, Oh, um, hello. Uh, sorry about all this. Sorry um, about, uh, uh, what? The storm. Oh, this there, ain't bad. We have way worse storms back in America. Uh, do do you now? Well, uh, perhaps you could be of assistance. Uh, uh, of course. What do you need me to do? Uh, well, when you all split from us, I gave chase after the unicorn, the, the black one. It brought me here to uh, Scrooge's Manor. Uh, but oh. before I got close, it burst into this snowy, well, this blizzard. I haven't been able to get through, and I I shouldn't send any of my men to to wade the the storm of it. But I imagine whatever it was or is causing it is coming from that direction. You think whatever's causing the storm is from that direction? Precisely. Look, and he gestures up, and you see. What looks like the snow almost whirling around this area. Now, I don't know how we got separated before, but uh, your assistance would be, uh, well, greatly appreciated. You seem much more capable, and he, he looks over at uh, Red Fox. Uh, uh, you're a... Uh, uh, outdoorsman, are you not? Red Fox will nod back. He's kind of focused on the uh, vortex of snow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can do what we can. Uh, get you some blankets, or uh, do you need any supplies before you 
attempt to wade your way in or I could I could use a jacket. You have size Yeah, if uh... you've got a winter coat. Yeah, you got Animal size coat. large. We have some wool coats. Um I don't know if we have anything large enough for you, uh Mr. Bunyan, but we can certainly find a, a blanket, perhaps. Oh. Yeah, I'll take what I can get. Uh, and he, he sort of gestures, to them, oh, go on, and they, they all run off, uh, sort of gathering up some supplies, uh, bringing you back some wool jackets. Uh, and you, Bunyan, uh, actually get uh, what looks like just a really thick piece of sail material. <laughs> I wrap it around. Well, well, thank you. Of course. Um. Now I. I'm sorry. We we can't do more. I I don't mean to. Yeah, I know you just got here. I'd hate to put even more on your plate. Oh, it's nothing. We. <laughs> I uh, I you know I give Red Fox an elbow and I go. We've seen our fair share of winter storms. Come along. For sure. And I I just start waltzing on in with my sail wrapped around me. I say, babe, stay close. Don't want you getting lost in the blizzard. Mm. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we're going in with an ox. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll follow along in the trail that Bunyan and his ox are making. I will. Right. Uh, Doctor Doctor Watson will follow alongside Red Fox. As you guys start to wade your way in, um, the snow hits you almost like a wall. Um, I'd say Bunyan and Red Fox, both of you are pretty used to this. Um, in fact, it's damn near nostalgic. You have been in storms and blizzards this intense. Now, this time of year, it, you know, it can happen, but not nearly with this level of intensity. And you're not sure it happens in England very often. Um, this is like a, a proper uh, northern storm. Uh, and then how are you guys going to attempt to get through? Are you going to uh, sort of muscle your way through, just try to, you know, tough it out? Are you going to try to carefully move between the, uh, the sort of mounds of snow and things, taking your time? Uh, or are you going to do something else uh, to try and, you know, resist this, these heavy snow drifts and this um, strong wind? Well, certainly Paul Bunyan and Babe are just going to muscle their way, if possible, with a, with a smile on his face, much like you see in his token. Just uh, right. push on through. Fox and Shaggy just, are going to follow along in the path. Can I just get, like, on Babe's back? Babe's not for riding. Yeah, but Babe is also, twi like, four times the size I am. Babe babe hoofs, huffs at you. Offended. Oh, yeah. Offended. Offended huff. <laughs> Fox will say you'll probably want to stay behind them in this anyway. But don't but stand too be close behind him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, not the ox, maybe. I will say, to, here's here's the option I'll give them. If you guys are just going to kind of tough it out, just kind of push your way through, um, it is going to be... It's going to be a strength save. Now, if, uh, if Paul Bunyan wants, he cannot get advantage on this. To give advantage to the other, the other people, um, basically because they'll be kind of like using Paul Bunyan as the, uh, as the buffer. Uh, to this storm, could but I like Paul Bun? Yes. Could I just like tie my rope around Paul Bunyan's waist and my waist so that way I can just not, not fall behind <laughs> if he's game. If he's game for it. <laughs> Well, everybody, stay close. Storm's getting pretty strong out here. Can my dog smell anything strange in the uh, in the snow? 
Uh, you can make a perception check. Uh, how do I roll it with him? Uh, here. Yep. Oh, 21. All right, your dog, his hair stands on the back of his neck, and he starts barking pretty aggressively at the storm. Uh, Red Fox is going to draw his pistol and uh, ready an attack action, but keep going. All right. Seeing, uh, seeing Red Fox take out his gun, Dr. Watson will take out their gun and uh, just kind of like stay huddled up. I mean, he's a big monkey man. I can't imagine he's too cold. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need everybody to make a strength save. It looks like Tarzan already made one. I do uh, not. Oh, uh, Paul, Bunyan the Paul Bunyan oh, made the. Paul Bunyan made Oh, Paul Bunyan, yes. All right, Paul Bunyan, as, as you and Babe are walking through, you're just kind of whoosh, 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 just cutting a path through here. Yeah. Uh, with advantage, 25 will do it. Are we rolling with advantage? Uh, yes. Yeah. Because Paul Bunyan is, is taking the brunt of it. Uh, he didn't get advantage on this. Well, <laughs> all right. Doctor Watson will have to make a con save. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen will pass it. Uh, a nasty cold comes across you. Uh, you feel like you, you damn near might get frostbite, but right as you're starting to shiver and and get like to a point where you might get injured by this this un this supernatural cold. Uh, Bay leans down and just kind of huffs at you this hot breath uh, to keep you just a little warm enough uh, to get through that that first bit of shivering. Thank um, you, babe. <laughs> uh, Paul Bunyan, as you are sort of waiting, taking charge of this uh, this path, um, the snow is getting high. Like, it is almost... To your waist at this point you Dang. feel like your 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 members behind you might not have even been able to kind of walk this far if you hadn't been cutting a trail hmm. well aren't you all lucky i'm here <clears throat> and babe of course we are bunyan we are Is it well, Fox will, like Fox? pat him on the shoulder most certainly this, i have no and, idea and where we'd be he also followed up with, I don't think this is a natural snowstorm, like, stay on guard. When you Paul turn Bunyan, around, uh, oh, Paul, go ahead. you yes. are going to notice something. Dr. Doolittle, Dorian Gray, and Johnny Appleseed are missing. Oh. Oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, attendance check. Anybody seen Dr. Doolittle? Or Dorian Gray, for that matter. Not since he tried to cut down the big Benjamin. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's no lo no use looking for him now in this storm. We we better we better try to get out of the storm. You know, this is not a place you really want to stay all day or all night. Better charge on. Try to find him. Stay Tomorrow. together, guys. We will. All right. We will keep them in our memories. <laughs> uh, are you going to continue to wade through? So I'm going to continue to wade through the the the, the snow. All right, I need your strength check first. Okay. Oof. All right, twenty one. All right, the rest of you can roll now with advantage. Twenty three. <laughs> you pass it. Tarzan, you you have like a wool coat on, so it's not like the the most comfortable experience. Yeah. Uh, you're used to being naked. Yeah, I, I imagine I'm like barefoot and my, my feet are going numb, but the rope that I've tied around Paul Bunyan's ankle is helping me get through these strength saves. <laughs> uh, with a 14, um, Fox, you start to like feel that nip, that icy cold touch that you've felt many, many times. Um, and as you you start to feel like, all right, this might be a problem, your dog sort of, sort of saddles up to you and sort of its little bit of warmth keeps you from, from being harmed by this cold. He'll, uh, he'll pat Shaggy's head. 
it wags its gotta, tail, but... Gotta love a loyal dog. Yep. Uh, his fur is still on end as he's kind of, like, looking around, sniffing. Um, and he lets off a little whining noise. Uh, if you would like to make an insight check or a, uh, I guess an animal handling would also be another one. I'll go with insight. Mm -hmm. 11. 11. You're not quite sure what he's trying to indicate. He's obviously uncomfortable with the situation. I'll keep him close and stay alert. Like, I'm still holding an action to attack if I see anything. All right. You're a good ways in now. You see what looks like some light in the distance, Paul. Um, the snow has gotten very high. Um, it almost feels like it's attacking you directly. Ooh. Um, as it's getting stronger and stronger, trying to knock down the Man of Timber. Or the Titan of Timber. Yes. Paul Bunyan, he, he, he peers through the peers through the snow. It's almost blinding. He's squinting. And he goes, There she is! I see some light up ahead! Stick together. We're almost there. All right. And he, uh, Let's get another strike check. He pushes on. All right. All right. All right. 18. As you... Uh, sort of wade your way through you feel like you're you're just barely able to make it uh as we need everybody else to roll strength saves all right and with that you're paul you're pushing through you can barely make it you feel like your knees are starting to buckle a little from just the cold like your joints are freezing solid but it's at that moment you're able to push through the rest of the way Ooh. we all here one paul bunyan does a little count <laughs> it seems like everybody who is with you is here. Out of game. Is sure. Grendel with us? I, well, I'll get to that. Oh, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> well, um, when you're all sort of uh, counting up, you get the feeling like, oh, okay, well, one time you did lose Johnny Appleseed in a snowstorm, and he just hid underneath one of his apple trees for basically the entire winter. Um, he wasn't quite right after he got out of that, but, you know, he did survive. So you feel like he, he will uh, will help the other companions. All right. They're in good hands. As we cut away back to the streets of London. Dilly, 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 dilly. Oh, there's no place like London. Grendel. You are in the streets of London. A bum is attempting to uh, sort of pull his way out of your mouth. <laughs> hey, the whole lot, the whole lot. <clears throat> you said you weren't going to eat me. You promised. Hey, but I said you not this and I'll admit I told you to eat me head first, but you went toe first, huh? <laughs> now I know you said it was a challenge, but I, I think this is a bad thing for you. Ah! He, he, he the gets bum eaten. will <laughs> spew out of Grendel's mouth and land in the alley <laughs> in a pile of wet. Yeah. Oh, damn. 
Bartholomew. Yeah. I told you I could eat you in one gulp. Do you believe me now? I believe you now. I believe you. I believe you. You have been very good company. And I thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. I'm just... And Grendel, he's looking at you. But it almost seems like he's looking past you. For this... And his face sinks in terror. He goes completely pale, turns around, and just runs, screaming, Ah! 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 Oh, it is so difficult to make friends. And Grendel will turn. On top, on top of a building, you see the silhouette of someone staring down at you, his eyes red with fire. You can't make out any of his details. He looks like he's almost maybe amorphous or he's he's made of a, a conglomeration of something. As he stares down at you, you hear a voice echo in your head. I must offer my condolences for your mother's death and my unknowingness of your survival. Who are you, the red visage? I am sorry. My rudeness is... Uh, with unnecessary. I am Tom Blackyard. Uh, when I uh, was told by my minions that you survived and that you were here, I had to make an appearance. Your mother and I were close. Not like that, but we were of similar team. You knew my mother. I did. We are ancient creatures, her and I, or were, before that dreaded march. Wildwolf, the wretched creature, stole from you what he had no right to take. The warrior! He I hate him! I hate him forever! He took a sword to her throat. Yes, but he did not take her life alone. The world, man, they wanted her dead. They all feared her power, her lineage. And now, they fear me. But I understand, I always have understood. The greed of man. This Beowulf, he has escaped you, but he has not escaped me. No, Grendel. In my younger days, I was less patient, less forgiving of such crimes. Beowulf may have slain your mother, but I have punished him for his arrogance. His victory was short-lived, you see. He is no longer a creature, or he is no longer a hero. Beowulf is now my servant. A shadow of a man. Shadow of a man who once slayed the mighty Grendel. <laughs> the, the, the rumors of my demise are much 
exasperated. Exacerbated? <laughs> I forget the word. I understand the exaggeration. <laughs> but know this. I did take Boyle's life. But then I gave it back to him. But not in glory, no. I made him something far worse than a dead hero. I made him eternal. Cursed to wander these dark centuries by my side. A mere tool, a pawn in the game he does not understand. You stole him from I... his glorious afterlife. That is correct. And he agreed to this? I gave him no choice. Excellent. I applaud you, Dracula. I appreciate the sentiment, but poor Greg. Son of Angloboda, descendant of Cain. Your rage cannot be sated by my mere meddling. No. You I say that offer. his shade still exists. It does. And I have an offer for you, O Grendel the Mighty. Ooh. Are you a broker, then? Oh, no mere broker, just a family friend. Then please enlighten me. Oh, mighty Grendel, I shall satiate your rage, your need for revenge. I shall give you... I am kneeling before you. You may do with him as you please. Tear him limb from limb. Extract every ounce of blood and vengeance that you desire. If you first do one small thing for me. And that is? There are a man. Meddlesome, curious fools. Even now they don't know that they head towards Transylvania, whom I castle. I ask of you this. Bring them to me. Unharmed. That is all I ask. Bring them safely to me. And to you, Grendel, I shall give you your reward. Revenge. <laughs> oh, great dark spirit, you. I know these. You will not be needing my help to bring them to you. Please trust me, Count Dracula. These will find you unharmed in time. And as for the warrior, I shall hunt him myself. Are you refusing my offer, dear Grendel boy? Don't you find it more sportsmanlike? Wouldn't it be more fun? I know it will be for me. I Especially once I'm done with your little pawn. 
care not for fun as much as I do certainty. I have lived these immortal lives of mine through careful calculation and each step carefully measured. If you want your revenge, know this. As long as Beowulf remains my servant, he will be untouchable by your hands, bound by my will. Oh. If you accept it, <laughs> I see how it is then. To get to him, I'll have to go through you. Far more fun. Mm. Far more sporting. <laughs> you are truly your mother's son. My mother was a fool. She could not be harmed by any weapon made by man. So what does she keep in the living room? A giant sword, a sword made by giants. Ridiculous. You mention my mother like it's some holy grail. Ah. <laughs> uh. I should have known. You're just as foolish as she was when I gifted her that sword. Be gone from my sight then. Your death will be nothing more than a cliff note in my diary. My as he gestures has... his hand, he turns to a swarm of bats that fly towards you snatching you uh, from where you stand, lifting you into the air, Grendel, and tossing you into the snowstorm. <laughs> His cackles laughing as that swarm of bats flies off, dispersing in the night sky. We find you in the middle of this snowstorm. Grendel is still laughing. <laughs> Dracula, my death has already been a footnote in someone else's tale. It shall not be repeated. And Grendel gets up and sloths into the storm. And then DM, it's nine o'clock. I have to go feed the animals. All right. I'll be well, back we will, shortly. We will cut back then to the other group. Uh, we see Bay turned around, looking at the snowstorm, going, Mom as she has heard somebody land in the snow. But the rest of you's attention is drawn towards the manor. Uh, snow seems to be flooding towards the main entrance of it, as if something has sort of blown not only from it, but towards it. Um, the manor has no lights. It is near pitch black. Uh, however, there is a strange, almost moonlit light on the outside of the building. Um, you can see, you know, yourselves pretty well, but into the manor, it might as well be pitch black. A torch? Yeah, did any of us bring light sources? Guys? As... I'm going to take a lighter out of my coat pocket and just light it. Dr. Watson does have a lighter. I'll say that. Uh, 
Well, we can light the lights when we get in there. I'm also going to take out my pipe and light my pipe. Uh, Shaggy is going to turn and start howling into the storm. What is it, boy? Ooh. Uh, you can, can make I... a perception check. Okay. I wish Doolittle was here. Unfortunately, with the, the darkness and with the snow just pelting around you, you really can't uh, make it out. Um, the wind, while the snow isn't as high here, the wind is certainly higher. Um, and it's just pelting you guys as you stand here. Okay, we got to get into the building, guys. And I'll, I'll shush uh, Gaggy. Um, do we need to roll initiative or can we just kind of move? Um, you can just move. Okay. Um, I'll approach the door. All right. Tarzan, you and Tarzan, approach Tarzan the door. check. Handle hot. The handle <laughs> is not hot. Okay, good. Yeah, Tarzan will just open it like a savage. Just trying to barge in. That's my little. Oh, I give you my little lighter. Just, just right behind you. So you open the door. Feeling a small in. entrance way. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm just. I'll I'll come in and uh, like I'll have my uh, my gun ready. Kind of look around and see what I can see. As you walk in, you can feel your breath um, and see it. This like icy cold is in here. Tarzan will follow. Get out of the cold. Uh, you see three doors, one in front of you and one on either side. This is the first time old, old Paul Bunyan might have a bit of a problem. It's going to be a tight squeeze through some of these. Oof. Hope there's space for me and babe. Um, I will tell you, because you are large sized, um, it is double movement to move through doorways that are only five foot wide. Okay, I'll squeeze. Yeah, as you basically squeeze through them. What uh, what are these things on the side of the main door here? Um, they are large windows. Large windows. Okay. Are there any uh anything we can light in this like opening area to get a bit more light? With uh, uh there, there are some sconches up above you. Um, however, the candles of them are missing. Are there okay. any um like chairs or anything? Uh, not in this entrance way. It looks like a place to take off your coat. Three door. What about like a what Three about people. like a picture frame? Uh there's not a picture. Okay. Three door, three people. Open all at once. Yeah, I'm good with that. Alright, gentlemen. One, two, three. Right. Yep. Box. I'm gonna we'll describe and go left. I'm going to describe uh, things I'm first. Sure Top door. You boom, kick it open. It is a, a coat closet. There's some hats and some wool coats. Are the hangers wood? Uh, they are wood. The Third. room to the right. Boom. Appears to be a uh, like a piano room, like sort of a waiting room. Uh, probably where guests would go or things. Okay. Um, but the last one. Uh, the room where Tarzan is. Tarzan, you go to push, kick the door open. And when you do, you're kind of rebuked back from it as if there is some invisible force pushing you away from the door. You feel push. Hmm. If I if I try it well, again, do it. I feel the push again? Uh, yes. 
Is it like is it clear that he was like visibly stopped, or does it look like he tried to open the door and couldn't? He couldn't even touch the doorknob. Something invisible was forcing his hand away. Mm. Uh, me make lasso with rope <laughs> and try to hook it on the doorknob. You try, and it just sort of knocks the the rope away. While while Tarzan bananas. is um is is going bananas, I I want to take a something wool like a scarf or something out of the the little closet, and this little piano bench that's in here. I want to kick one of the legs off, wrap the the wool around it, all right, and then um I want to light the wool. All right. Make a survival check. Okay. I think we should kick all the legs off and try to make four torches. Uh, with a 16, you do uh, manage to make a little torch and are able to illuminate yourself with it, uh, revealing more of this room. Uh, it is, again, a piano room and stuff. There is a portrait of a woman on the north facing wall. Uh, she looks uh, proper and regal and she's sitting next to a piano. If we need more kindling, we can break up that frame and use those as torches as well. But this this ottoman looks as if it has three more legs. We can make you know, three more torches. Tarzan starts ripping up the clothes in the closet for torches. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll a d6. All right. A single d6? Uh, yes. Four. All right. You managed to rip up four strips of cloth. Um, you feel like you can make four torches out of them, assuming you have the, the wood to do it. All right, I bring them in here and throw them on top of the three-legged piano bench. With the 16, do you think I could easily make the other torches? Uh, no. Okay. Red is there. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll help make torches. Huh. I, I was going to investigate the painting, but we could make the torches first. As a survival? So, yes. Does 19 make torches? A 19 does. Um, as you manage to wrap them up, do you, are you going to light them all, or are you just going to keep a couple? I, I think we should keep a couple if we're all traveling together. Tarzan one I own torch. Think. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll hand Tarzan a torch. I won't, I won't light it yet, though. And yeah, the, the torches are just there for anybody who wants them. Paul Bunyan, um, you were squished in this hallway. He goes, I'll, uh, oh. uh, guy, oh. you know, you know ba I, I don't think it's the best idea for me to hold his way in. Oh, oh, gosh, babe. Oh. Hang on. Uh, yeah. Ugh. And you he's sort of like as in a permanent duck. <laughs> You watch as Paul but I imagine to get through the doorway, you had to almost like go prone and kind of like will your way in. <laughs> <laughs> Duck walk through. Yeah. Because I don't know if me holding the torch is the best thing, guys. I, I, I'm going to let you guys hang on to those, all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyways, what are we doing here? What do I have to roll to inspect the painting? Like, like, just observe it and see if there is anything that stands out as, uh, like, showing us any kind of secrets or something. Um, you can investigate it. 
otherwise, just looking at the painting doesn't have any. Like, I could just tell you what the painting looks like. A Tarzan uh, answer. I'll, I'll, inv I'll investigate. We save right. Banker of Dorian. 18, you see uh, what looks like a, a beautiful young lady sitting at a uh, at a piano. Uh, it is actually this piano uh, and that stool. What was that stool? Um, underneath it, it says Fan Scrooge. Uh, and with an 18 investigating it, you see that in her hand uh, looks to be a key, a rather large, ornate key. Um, she has it sort of carefully and, and elegantly tucked uh, under one of her hands, while her other hand's kind of over it. Okay, I'm going to... Or I, I don't know if somebody else wants to do something, but I, I was just going to investigate the room and see if I could find that key. I... It, do you tell us about the key? Yeah, 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 I tell everybody. Okay. What if we were to check under or in the piano itself? Yeah, we can start there. Yeah, oh, and when they were cool. destroying the uh, piano bench, was it like, did it seem like it could open or anything? Uh, when they were destroying it, I mean, fluff did come out of it, um, but it didn't seem okay. like anything fell out of it, for example. Okay. Yeah, and there was piano... like, a piano. <clears throat> Yeah, piano benches are typically hollow. Mm -hmm. Keep uh, music sheets and stuff in there. Tarzan's gonna help by smashing this pot in the southeastern corner. Look for the key. <laughs> we, we don't need to smash everything, Tarzan. Psh! Okay. Smashing the pot uh, reveals dirts and root. All right, I'll start combing through it while they search the piano or whatever. <laughs> Apple seed would have been sad. You see Tarzan eat a bug. Tarzan will eat some of the dirt for, for Johnny Appleseed so that he honors the kill. May I roll an investigation to start searching the room? Uh, where are you checking? I'm checking the piano first. All right. And you can roll an investigation. And will that be advantage because I'm helping him? That oh, well. Crit. <laughs> Beautiful. Watson, you've been around old Sherlock Holmes long enough to know. Uh, this sounds like a mystery to you. Um, in fact, you remember a, a certain case involving a secret compartment hidden inside of a piano. It was unlocked in that mystery by playing a certain song. Uh, this piano... Uh, well, not the piano. It doesn't have any sheet music on it, but the painting shows sheet music. As Dr. Nice. Watson is going to, he's going to approach the painting. This reminds me of a case that I had done with Sherlock a few years ago. If you see here, there's sheet music. I wonder if this is a key. As Watson is going to go over to the piano and just go, do, 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 do. And, and when you do, kachunk, you hear something unlock inside the piano. As I'm going to, as Dr. Watson lifts himself up higher. So this way he can raise the, the portion, so this way you can look at the mechanics in the side of the piano, following the source of the sound. Following the source of the sound, you find that underneath the piano wire are, uh, is a compartment that has popped up, in which is a key. As I'm going to take it out and hand it to Red Fox, because he has more nimble fingers than I. Awesome, I'll take it. Uh, on cursory glance, this appears to be a manor key, which is uh, used to unlock basically all the rooms in this manor, like a master key. Okay. Um, 
does anybody else want to do anything in this room? If not, I was going to approach that door there and carry on. Tarzan will scoop up some of this floor dirt into his pouch. Just in case. Pocket sand, a great yeah. little technique. Tarzan. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, hmm. I'll open this door. All right, you go to open it, and of course, uh, much to your surprise, it's locked. But yeah. you easily have the key. Slide it in, and ka-chunk, the door unlocks. Kristoff, are you back? I am back. All right, we're gonna we're gonna round up your thing in the in the snow right now. Grendel, having picked himself up from the snow, uh, sees what looks like uh, like a trail, like some something big has gone through here recently. Uh, Grendel will actually uh, investigate the tracks thoroughly for just a moment. All right. Uh, would you like me to roll a DM, uh, a survival uh, DM, or yes, a I... survival check? Anyone investigating these tracks? You, of course, recognize these tracks. You've seen these men before. This men and animal. Uh, they look to be a giant man and a bull accompanied by a few smaller smaller crowd Banyan. Grenda will follow follow the the rift in the snow uh, make an insight check as you're whoosh, 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 trotting through the snow 17. With a 17, Grendel, you're you're a pretty tricky guy. It is convenient that old Dracula dropped you off right where Bunyan's path had been. Hmm. Um. I need you to make... Well, how are you getting through the snow, I guess? Are you just brute forcing it? Well, he was following the, the, the path at first. Yeah. Um, with that insight 17, that idea, uh, wow, I don't know if this will help at all. But would there be any way for him to know if this was, these particular traps were, or uh, tracks were laid, um, via magic i need you to make a wisdom save all right oh man <laughs> with the this 20 is, this is making up for last session you uh you sort of shake your shake your head and you realize there is no trail you would have just been wandering off into the snow No, no trail at all. Okay. What to do? What to do? Um. He'll go. How high is the snow? In um, terms of Grendel, who is again about, I think, just under nine foot. It's probably to his hips. All right, he will look around. Obviously, it's it's pretty rough, uh, but he'll look around and see if there's anything noticeable uh, around him. All right, survival check. Oh! <laughs> Unfortunately, there is not. He will pick a random direction. 
he will go 20. He will go north. <sighs> All right. I'll give you it. That's, that's, you rolled a 20, technically. Well, that was As just you're... a directional. That was a directional. All right. You're, you're, psh, psh, psh. I'm going to need a con save from you. Uh, as you are in this sort of blistering cold. 13. Unfortunately, does not do it. Oh, You're going to take five points of cold damage as this cold whips at you harshly and violently um, before you find yourself trotting out of the woods over here. You see a big blue bull just sort of sitting in the middle of this entranceway. Oh. Now oh. that is coincidental to see you, my bl great blue friend. Oh. And Grendel, uh, actually, he'll do it from here because his arms are so damn long. Yeah. He'll reach out and scratch the bull behind his ears. Oh, the bull. And he'll do it, it really well. He'll he's, he's he'll give him like a nice nice good scratching. <laughs> the bull is loving it. Bunny, Where? you see Where Rendell. is your master? Take me to your master. Oh. You hear that outside of Paul Bunyan. What in the hell? Pa Paul Bunyan, uh, he like gets on his hands and knees and pokes his head <laughs> through the door to like look through Babe's legs. <laughs> you see Grendel. You see oh, Grendel. it's you. Ah, Mr. Bunyan. And you see it's Grendel and... Uh, it's Grendel, and he is how he is, and he's pretty much just naked Bigfoot, but he has uh, acquired a shabby um, uh, top hat. And he pulls it off and brushes it off, and you can see written in large, blocky letters in the hat. Uh, what do you call that? The, the, the part interior that hits your of the head. top hat? Yeah, the interior... It says Bartholomew. <laughs> He's still Where'd you get that? Where'd you? Ne never mind. It, well, come on, Grendel. You're out there in the cold. It's it's a lot warmer in here. You have to squeeze though. There's not a lot of space. Oh, not a problem. And Grendel, um, Grendel can squeeze. He legitimately. His form morphs as he moves right past you both. Uh, like, almost like some sort of gelatin. As his gigantic form just squeezes and squishes in through the space between these two giant uh, creatures. Well, hey guys, Grendel's here. Yes. More, more good I news. I have <laughs> arrived. I have returned. What's going on? We have found shelter. Uh, Watson found a key. I did, in fact. If you would like me to regale you with the tale on how I discovered where the key was, I would gladly... I do not care. You whatsoever for your boring, boring story. Ah, well, then perhaps another time, then. Perhaps. As the door creaks open, having been unlocked, revealing uh, what looks like a, a small billiards room uh, for relaxing, uh, you see an old man uh, uncomfortably sleeping in a chair. 
Uh, Fox is actually going to approach the old man and try to wake him up. Uh, when you reach out to him, he... Oh, no! Get away! Get away! And he, he sort of, you know, rolls side to side. And when you actually touch him, you hear the sound of chains uh, as if he around. is wrapped in them. Get away! Zob! Ugh! I think he's and... under the influence of some kind of spell, guys. As you see chains appear, as well as a man wrapped in chains, a spectral figure. Oh! It is I, Jacob Marley! What is this bullshit? I was chained for my sins, and you shall be too! Uh, as the chains whip around wildly, I need everybody to roll initiative. Oh. initiative rule. All right. Tarzan, you are quick to respond as one of the chains whips at you. Uh, these tokens are chains? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna... I'll move over here and try to grapple it like I'm wrestling a snake in the jungle. <laughs> I'll give you advantage on that, because that makes logical sense. Uh, is that athletics? Um, that will be, yeah, in athletics. 20. 20, you <laughs> grapple with this chain uh, like a python. Um, this spectral chain, you you feel your hands kind of moving through it a little bit, but because you have such a good grip on it, you're able to hold on to it. You feel like you could swing from this if needed. Okay, uh, can I use it to swing over to Jacob Marley? Or would that yeah, be like an external thing? Okay. Yeah, I figure I'll you... try to go over the table to him. Boom, swing into this side. Oh! Does grapple count as an attack or is it just a, a, a separate thing? Grapple's well, this is an attack. This is unique in the sense that it's like technically these chains aren't creatures. Yeah. So. I'm just letting you do it as like your ability to actually swing from the. Thing. Oh, okay. So I would still have like uh, some amount of action, or no? Yeah, you still get. Okay, it, I'll say. That's yeah. your movement. Um, I'm just gonna say stop and try to punch him. You try to punch him with a 16. You, whoop, swing at him and your fist goes through him. Um, Whoa! As a you cannot hurt those who have already been damned! Let me make sure I can do this, I think I can. Yeah, okay, bonus action. I swing at him again, and I whiff again. You whoo, go right through him. You feel like you hit him. Your hand just goes through him. Guys, what do? That didn't start his hand's turn. He, Jacob Marley, he goes, Hear me now, the wails of the damned and despair. And uh, he does that to you, oh, Tarzan. That is a hit. Uh, Oh, fuck. You need to make a wisdom save. Wisdom save. I don't know why I put it as an attack roll. Uh, you fail it. 
Tarzan. You take nine damage. Tarzan is at zero since we haven't had any any short rests. <laughs> oh shit. Tarzan's out cold. As, as you Tarzan whoa, need help. Whoa. Where's, where's Doolittle's <laughs> magic tattoo, man? <laughs> <laughs> and as this happens, the chain wraps around Tarzan. Um, the other chains move, uh, and each of them are going to whip at whoever they're near. So one of them at Watson and one of them at Grendel. So this is Watson. This is Grendel. All right. Those are, that's, those are both hits for sure. I Nine will and five. I will as a reaction. I will attempt a uh a key it was a Watson ape instinct. Alright. Need to make an investigation check against a twenty-five. Almost. Twenty-one does not as both of you get hit. Uh Watson for nine, Grendel for five. And then I need you both to make strength saves. Uh, Watson will pass it and uh, no, Grendel will pass it. Watson will pass it. As both of you pass it, the chains trying to wrap themselves around you. Grendel. All right. I think the thing to do is Grendel is going to dash <laughs> when he uses the dash action he can move through creatures medium size or smaller pushing them aside all right um, so he's gonna dash here 5 10 15 actually Yeah, he's just gonna move around <laughs> and hit every single one of these creatures and uh, cause okay. them four damage each. Now, which direction are you moving? Up, I imagine? Yeah, because you're heading that Two, way. Five, so, yeah. Grendel. Yes. Throw me 2d6. We'll see how, how successful you are at doing that. One of the biggest things is hopefully the dash will move this guy and uh, and quit any of the uh, I don't know who got wrapped up. Only a four, pretty bad. Four, bad. That doesn't happen. All right, as you uh, like charge through them, the chains do get knocked around a little. Um, but when you go towards Jacob Marley. You just phase right through him. Mm -hmm. um, make a perception check. I guess everybody who's in the room. Uh, when I knock this chain mm -hmm. over, uh, does it pull its wrappings, its grapple off him? Uh, it does not. Okay. Shit, it usually does. <laughs> well, a, four, a four, fortunately, has, has yeah. kept that from happening. Watson, don't see it. All right. Perception. Yeah. Unfortunately, nobody has noticed. Does Paul Bunyan make this save or no? I'll say Paul does. He, he can see from here. Okay. Um, I think I might not oh. be unconscious, actually, because I think I was only supposed to take the 9, not the 15. I think the 15 is from the crit that's not in... Yeah, I, I was gonna say it was okay. just a nine. Never mind then. I'm not unconscious. All right, you're not unconscious, but I'll say you're still grappled, and I'll let you make a perception check. All right. Uh, with advantage, because you're stuck to the chain. All right. Twenty-three. As um he charges through, everybody's sort of caught up in the chaos. Tarzan, you notice that when the chain gets near Jacob Marley. It actually like affects him. It hits him, and he looks kind of scared for a moment before you kind of swing away. Uh, Jenner Marley. DM. Jenner Ghost. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tarzan. Say that again. I was just saying, Jenner Ghost. 
Uh, Grendel, with the last of his turn, he's gonna hit this wall. Probably right. put a little dent in it. Well, you're still using the Juggernaut thing, so... Oh, fuck! How, you... how, how much fucking... Oh. Grendel must succeed in Oh, too fun! Okay. How, how much... Uh, to... let, me, let me see how much movement I have. A strength I have saving eight, throw eight, eight, is what eight, I need eight, from you. I do have 10 more feet of movement. Uh, so a strength saving throw. No. Um. Seven. As you oh, run. Oh, yeah, he just boom, pops into it. Smash into this door. Ooh, two, <laughs> two ones so far. All right, so he's gonna smash into the door, uh, but he'll turn around. And with his bonus action, he's just going to... I'll say with a one, the door splinters. You feel like it's gotten jammed, but you can see into it now. Okay, he's not looking through it right now. Because <laughs> he's going to turn around and wave his, his one arm into the air and scream. And as he does, the hand starts to grow and enlarge. I will and say you did use your it, action to dash, I believe. I did, and I'm using a bonus action oh, to yes. rage. Alright. As Grendel grows <laughs> to a hulkish size. Yep. The, his hand, specifically, the nails on it grow to three foot long claws. <laughs> And that will be his turn. All right. As Fox. We'll say two foot long claws. That makes more sense. Yeah. Tarzan okay. yelling out. Fox is going to run up that way. And if I get to here, or Tarzan's still bound by the, by the chain on that thing, right? Yes, he's bound by this one. How long is the chain on this one? Um, they are spectral, so they go up into the ceiling. You feel like they're whatever length you basically need them to be if you're going to pull them around. Okay. What is here? What is the um, action economy of trying to grapple the chain and hit him with it? Uh, that would just be an athletics check, which is just a, basically it's an object interact uh, to see if you can even grab the chain. And then it's just an attack. Okay. Fox will come up here and then he'll try to grapple that chain. And what, what was that? Athletics? Yes. With an 18, you grab it, pulling on the chain. I'm going to try to wrap it around uh Morley Marley All right Let's make that attack roll. You are proficient with it. Uh you just treat it like a just roll your normal melee or whatever you're doing with it. Okay. Uh would that just be an unarmed strike? Yeah. We'll say punch. Punch as you whoo, wrap the chain. It hits him physically and he oh no! Not the chains! Not the chains! As one of them is wrapped around him. Okay. Um, I gotta, I gotta check something. One second. Alright. I might... I'm, I'm not sure. I think I already have to grapple him to do this, and I don't know if that's what I did or just attacked him. Um... Well, technically, you're grappling him with the chain. Yeah. Okay, so I've got that. I, right. I guess I've actually already used my action, but I can pin him next turn. All right. Oh, well, Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan pops in. It's, excuse me, Wolfie. Uh, and uh, he just he points his gun at. Well, he's not going to do that. He pulls out his. Uh, <laughs> You got any rock hat. salt in there, Bunyan? <laughs> yeah, he he takes a step forward, and 
gives this chain a whack with his with his uh, his axe. All right, which is a miss. Boom! Slide right through the chain, wraps around. Oh, oh! I don't like that. He uses his bonus action to swing his hand axe instead. All right. Seventeen. All will. Right. Oh, that will hit. Okay. Yep. I clicked it. There we go. All right. More than ten. So you kunk, cut it off of your axe. Uh, the spectral chain seems to reform uh, on the other side of your axe, but is no longer grappling your your double bladed axe. Ooh. Uh, he goes, babe. You know, it might be good to have you here. And Babe oh. goes <laughs> and runs all in here, trampling, you know, squeezing through. Uh, <laughs> just a bull in a china shop. He's just a bull in a china shop. And he's he's like, oh, excuse me. Oh. Is it possible for him to get here or totally or just blocked? Um, these are like objects. I'll say it can go through there. But remember, does, does Bay have enough movement? Because... I guess this Babe was right area. here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. How far does You're Babe... You're having to squeeze can... around a bunch Babe of has... people. Babe has 40 feet. Uh, well, I guess he can't, really. So we'll just say that Babe goes... Oh. And then... <laughs> it's it's all right that the giant bull is not as effective indoors. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Babe just downside. comes on He's... in and moves helpfully. <laughs> Knock it over furniture. <laughs> yeah. He's trying not to step on the dog. Yeah. And that's turn. All right. That's Dr. Dr. Watson, Watson. Is gonna, Dr. Watson is going to do some crazy ape maneuvers as he's going to land himself on top of this pool table. And following what his friend Red Fox has done, he is going to, as a free interact, try to grab, like, hang on to this chain. All right. For athletics, yeah, twelve. Athletics. Unfortunately, it it wraps around, uh, and instead wraps around your arm. That's okay, because it's gonna do exactly what I wanted to. As uh, with um, with tavern brawler, I want to take it and I want to pull it, and I want to try to attack um, Jacob Marley with it. And in doing so, it's gonna lead me into doing something else. But I'm gonna. All right. I'm going to oh, need a far. strength save from you first. That you need a strength save from me first? Yes, you have not easily grappled it. It is fighting you, too. 23. 23 will do it, though, as you're able to pull on the chain as much as it's fighting against it. All right. Would you like me to use improvised weapon or monkey fist with the, with the chain? Improvised weapon's fine. Okay, it's gonna be twenty. Uh, roll twenty-four. I got eight points of damage. That's gonna hit as he gets wrapped with another chain. No, please, not the chains. And, and as a uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to grapple him because of a uh, the the thing from a uh, tavern brawler. All right, so you and Fox are both grappling him on either side. Nine, so I don't know what's gonna do. <laughs> All right, Tarzan. Uh, am I grappled? You're wrapped up in this chain. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try to get out of this chain because I'm terrified of Jacob right. Marley right now. <laughs> uh, I love it. Me, king of the jungle. Me not fr afraid. Oh shit! That ghost. <laughs> <laughs> ghost not in jungle. <laughs> me uh, over me head what is that like an acrobatics <laughs> roll uh whichever it's acrobatics or athletics all right hell yeah oh easily nice. tarzan you're dealing with a vine and a snake you've done this yeah. before in fact with the 20 i'll say you're grappling the chain now all right then uh since i am afraid i'm gonna step over here slightly away from what i'm afraid of and attempt to strike this this ghost. I think that's a miss. The fourteen. It will actually hit oh, him. Nice. It's very easy to hit with the <laughs> chain. As you 
Hit him with the chainy. No! Not the chains! No! As they start dragging him down. Down. No, I'm going to hell! <laughs> ah! Oof, poor guy. You send me to hell again! And then Tarzan's you gonna send somebody to hell. give Watson a high five. Say, ape, together strong. <laughs> As Watson will give you a high five. Grendel will seem to return to his normal size and then shake his head. Well, that was unexpected. What in the uh, bloody has, hell was that? Has Scrooge woken up? Uh, Scrooge has not woken up. <laughs> I think Grendel will smash the rest of this door in. <laughs> you just... This house is uninhabited, library. guys. In fact, the owner is right over there. Uh, when the bull came in... Uh, Ebenezer Scrooge's wallet fell out and you saw it had his ID and everything. Okay. Box will go over and try to wake Scrooge up now that he's no longer uh, under that enchantment. Or at least he thinks he isn't. All right. You try to wake him up. And when you do that, you hear again those sounds of chains. Uh, no, no, get away. Then you hey, see the chains go taut. And you see Jacob Marley climbing up the chains. Are you kidding hey, me? Hey, listen, <laughs> <laughs> I got dragged to hell. Dude, it fucking sucks down there. He's like, only the top half of him is sticking up and he's holding on to one of the chains. No, no, listen, before you beat my ass. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not the bad guy. Okay, now listen, Dracula did come to me and say that if I betrayed my friend, that he would get me out of hell. But I told him no, 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 Sereno. And so I... Listen, he sent ghosts. He sent ghosts, the, the evil specters of past, present, and future to tear Scrooge's soul apart. I used my chains to, to keep them together. That's what. That's why he's wrapped in chains. It's connected to his soul, to each of those people, the three I just said. He's like struggling to stay up because it seems like something is trying to pull him back down. Where are they, Marley? They're in the manor. You will leave three ghosts in this manor tonight on Christmas Eve. You got any advice for us? How to take them down? They're extremely powerful. They probably possess things. Um, They're really scary. Oh, I'm slipping. I'm slipping. Can oh, we can just do that, the Marley. Little... Speak quick. Can I insight um, what he's saying? Yes. <laughs> he's saying if we destroy these ghosts, this man will be saved. Me no trust. I... Listen, I told you what you needed to know, like... So I did a good deed, I'm... I'm gonna go to heaven, right? And he's looking mm. down. I'm gonna go to heaven, yeah? Goodbye. No! What do you mean, no? Me bleeding. Ah, I'm going! Ah! He gets dragged back down. You are bleeding. It smells delicious. Uh, Tarzan, since Gory isn't here, is going to come over to Scrooge and undo his pants. What are you doing, Tarzan? <laughs> Me learn from Dorian. 
What did Dorian? What? What did Do you learn from Dorian? Dorian say this how English shake hands. This 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 is not how the English shake hands, Tarzan. What what did Dorian do to you? Well, me no no. What, what happened with Dorian? <laughs> me and Dorian shake hands. And he's gonna put Fox his hand. He's gonna put his hand words. out to red, like he's like he's trying to shake. <laughs> no, that's, okay. that's okay. That's okay. That's okay, Tarzan. We're already friends. Uh, Fox is, however, gonna take out a notepad and on a list that has multiple homicide question mark, write sex with a vulnerable adult question mark. Oh no! Sexual assault on a vulnerable adult. <laughs> 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 Are you gonna turn us in after all of that, all we've been through? <laughs> not, not Tarzan, no. Oh, not Tarzan. Tarzan's oh. gonna get the help he needs. Dorian, I got you. I got you. <laughs> There's also like financial crimes? Question <laughs> mark. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is your violent Dory. <laughs> we are on a ghost hunt. Who is this creature? here and uh grendel will poke scrooge in the head so that his head rocks violently back oh oh no please this, this, this he'll is, poke uh, him again oh stop it grendel stop this is this is dorian gray's banker <laughs> i don't even know what that means let alone care <laughs> Why are we here besides taking shelter from this storm? You like battle, don't you, Grendel? We save, we save Dorian Banker. We're gonna go. We're gonna go fight these three powerful enemies. You can make a name for yourself again. And Half save old Jacob Marley, you. right? As he pops back up. Please. Was supposed to be permanent. <laughs> No, oh, I got these chains connected to him. We're like blood brothers, me and him. A Tarzan grabs you know one, one of the chains. You know one time I... Tarzan grabs one of the chains and hits him with it again. <laughs> Grendel, looks ah! at... Grendel looks at Red Fox. And his weird animalistic visage looks almost sly. You speak like you're trying to get me to do something. You don't need to do that. I asked a simple question. We're here to fight some ghosts. Because I don't know. I found you here. I imagine you're here for a reason. I don't know what it is. What is it? It has something to do with him. And he'll poke him again. Alright, you, you poke him. And when you do, uh, Red Fox, the key in your pocket actually begins to vibrate a little, uh, like with a soft hum. So, I'll Mr. take a to inspect it. Der Fox. When you inspect it, the tip of it is glowing. Why? And you see this strange uh. spectral lock in front of you. Does the rest of the party see it? They do not. I'll, re I'll, I'll relay to them that I see it and ask if they think I should try to unlock it. Tarzan, no see why not. It, it wouldn't hurt to try it. Okay. Um... Yeah, Fox is going to unlock it. See what happens. Or right, the hell you... opens. Lock it in. Hey, you've saved me! No. <laughs> uh, as, you, as you put it in this spectral keyhole, turn it, you feel a cold wind rush into this room. As this spectral uh, scene sort of plays out, you all see it once he does this. 
It's Scrooge. He walks into the door. He's dressed uh, a little differently. He's in more summer wear. Um, he's flipping through a bunch of notes. I'm going to see your bill. Dorian Gray request again. <laughs> Pay raise. Ah, humbug. He tosses it into the fire. Uh, oh. It's from the order. And he holds up a strange note. It has this very distinct seal on it. It's uh, of a cross and a dragon wrapped around it. Let's see. He opens it up. Van Helsing. Let's see. I have located the count. He's weakened. Cannot do this alone. Rouge, we need you to send more men and you yourself to come finish this fight. Come to Transylvania before it's too late. Bah, humbug. Doesn't he know I have duties here? And he slumps into his chair. Besides, the Order can't afford to send more men that way. It was his own silly pursuit to do it. And he tosses it into the fire. And for a moment, he just sits there, staring into the fire. Before the scene comes to an end. The specter fading. Oh. Uh, He's there. Little well, you man. actually, you actually all saw that play out. Oh. Uh, and I will post this. This is the item you have. Ooh. Oh, cool. Memento mortem. Was that its one use of Memento Mortem? Uh, in Scrooge Manor, you can actually do it as many times as basically it allows. Oh, okay. Outside of Scrooge Manor, it can only do it once per long. Uh, but that is what you saw. He threw... Uh, the letter into the fireplace and slumped into the chair. Okay. And the door creates light. Uh, yes, and as that happens, I forgot to mention this, uh, the room actually lights up. All of the sconches uh, sort of become illuminated. I'll put a little check mark so we know which rooms are lit. Um, I'll Fox is just yeah. going to start making his way towards the library as people do other stuff. All right. Is anybody else sure. doing stuff? Uh, Tarzan's going to get his torch lit and follow you to the library. Dude, this... This item is so cool, but it's a DM's nightmare. Yeah, well, that's the way why you've I made written it. it, it works great in this house. Yeah, but it could also work anywhere, and you're gonna have to fucking figure that shit out on the fly. I know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> is this a door right to the left of uh, Paul Bunyan? Uh, it is. Paul Bunyan's going to try it. All right. You try to uh, open the door, but as you do, Paul Bunyan, your hand is sort of rebuked from the door. Oh. What the hell is this? Again? Huh. He goes, fine. Come on, babe. 
and uh, I squeeze on into the library. As you squeeze on in, it is filled with books. Um, there is uh, stuff sort of strewn about. Um, this room is not lit. Oh, uh, does the does the key have any reaction in here? Uh, the key does hum. Everyone gather around for some more story time. <laughs> oh, I'm here. Before I go it, before I go there. So the door that Paul Bunyan just got re rebuked from for trying to open. I just want to like just knock on the door. As you go to knock on it, your hand is rebuked. You're not able to even touch the door. Ah. Okay. All right, then. And then I will follow everyone into the library for story time. Uh, before the story time starts, Tarzan wants to pull a book at random from the shelf. Uh, you pull a book at random. It comes out of the shelf. All right, he's holding it in his hands for now. All right. As you uh, find, or as you go into this room, the key is humming. Um, however, something is different. You do not see a keyhole. Oh. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to use it as like a dowsing rod and see if I get more of a reaction anywhere else in the room. I'll, I'll tell the party so I'm not just wandering around in the dark. All right. There's some torch light in here now. Oh, yeah, true. Oh. Tarzan's got his torch. If you want to make a survival a check to, to see if you can maybe use that thing to douse it. Survival? Okay. Anybody helping me? Um, I'll uh, survival? Um, I mean, Grendel's pretty damn good at survival. So, give you advantage, I suppose. Awesome. Does 15 get anything? 15 does. As you're sort of walking around, you get closer to where this uh, sort of sitting stool is. Um, at which point you see it uh, appear as you get close to it. It sort of just appears out of thin air. Okay, I'll unlock it. As you psh, unlock it, the room changes. Again, uh, appearing to be a different scene. Uh, this stool is moved over to here. Uh, Scrooge is on top of it, messing with this chest. Uh, sort of mumbling to himself. Can you believe it, Moriarty? Van Helsing telling me he found the count. He's chasing phantoms. Yes, I was once drawn to the hunt. The thrill of tracking beasts in the shadows. But it's all a distraction. I was a foolish one to do it. There are far more power in numbers. And in wealth. In controlling men through coin, not claws. You see another man. A well-dressed, bearded man. Uh, sort of standing uh, in this sort of walkway between uh, shelves. He smiles and kind of gives us a laugh. Precisely, Van Helsing is a relic of the past. Men like you and me, we shape the future. We wield power, true power. Let the others hunt their monsters. The Order would be better off with men like us in control. <laughs> Precisely. I'm going to deny his age. And that's that. As the scene comes to an end. Uh, during the scene, you may have heard the sound of pages being ripped from a book. <laughs> and there may or may not be soiled, crumpled up pages on the ground near Tarzan. As the room illuminates itself. Did we all see that, or was that just 
I think we all see them. You all see it. Whoever's in the room, basically. Does it like keep us from oh, seeing wow. other things in the room, or like can we see each other in the room while the scene's going on? Or yes, but you are all like specter to each other. Oh well, then there aren't any crumpled up soiled pages on the ground yet. I don't know. When you get back, there's crumpled up and they're on the ground. Well, Tarzan's gonna clean up because he got a little bit frightened in that chain battle. Yeah. That is a um, cool saw. Sorry, what were you saying? I said, uh, but that is what you all saw. He was up on here, meddling with his chest, talking with a man named Moriarty, uh, and talking about how the Order is going to deny Van Helsing's request for aid. The chest still there? Dude, Archie's involved with this. Yeah, it is the chest still there? I'm, I'm looking for it. It is. Uh, I'm going to use a key on it. All right, you climb up. You hear as you unlock it. Inside the chest, you see a couple of things. You see... Uh, here, you're actually going to just get a couple of things. So here. We're going to shaker of silver dust. Beautiful. Yeah. Neural Gino. And a strange sword is sitting in there. It is a short sword. It looks tarnished. It's in a sheath um, with some flayed leather in its uh, as its handle uh, as it's just sitting at the bottom of it. Uh, Fox is actually going to leave all the items in the chest, but he'll leave it open. Huh? He was looking for information. There it is. Oh, nice. There is four of those Neural Ginos and four of those Silver Dust of Purity. Oh, damn. Would anyone be upset if Tarzan used a Neural Gino right now? Well, I, think about it. it. It might be time for a short rest. Well, yeah, are we going to take a short rest? Because then we could save the Nerogino. I will oh, say it's like we each get one. Warm. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, we each get one, more or less. Or is that even right? That's not right. I can't do math. It is very late at night, but to be honest, that is you really each nice get one for if, a ghost if story. If Red doesn't want uh, one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking any of it. He's, somebody else's. He's got a gun and a dog. He's good. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Does Grendel <laughs> recognize the short sword? <laughs> Grendel, Ooh, let me see the short sword. Let me see. I don't. I didn't have the thing come up for the short sword. I mean, I didn't uh, post oh. it because it's just a sword by, by all accounts. But Grendel, you bring up a good point. He might know what this is. All right, Grendel, I'm gonna need some sort of check, history check, probably. A history check. Okay, Grendel ain't that much of a dummy, but we gotta leave it up to dice. Oh, Grendel, you look at this sword, and at first you kind of like, oh, you're a bit scared, spooked by it even. This is ah. a, this looks very similar to a sword that nearly killed you. It's one of the only weapons that could have killed you. A sword known as Excalibur. But this is not that sword. On closer inspection, it's far too tarnished, far too <laughs> poor looking. <laughs> yes! You might say it's Excalibur. Excalibur. Nice. I know this blade. I saw it. In the mythological age of this country. Legend has it that this weapon once belonged to the distant second cousin of a great hero and was forged from the remnant shavings of Excalibur, the legendary sword of King Arthur. Exc 
Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> I love Excalibur. This is what it's it's second uh showing. Yes. And it's different this time. I did it a different way. Grindel, the one-armed swordsman. No, <laughs> no, this hmm. isn't for me. I, in fact, cannot touch it. Tarzan, good with blade. Take your shitty legendary weapon. And right Grendel will throw the sword at Tarzan. Tarzan, duck. Uh, not particularly, not particularly nicely. Not with malice, but he he throws a sword at you. Tarzan ducks and pulls the sword out out of the bookshelf. It it, it fucking clank. It, it's a scallop, poor man. It fucking bounces off the bookshelf. Yeah, it just fucking slides unceremoniously towards him. <laughs> Paul Bunyan. Yeah. I need you to make a perception check. Oh. All right. Twenty. Paul Bunyan is alert. Eyes wide, ears open. Paul. Your neck begins twitch a little bit you feel a little uncomfortable he looks side turn to side. around feeling seeing something a small figure in the cracks of this bookcase as it sort of is peeking out paul looks over his pinky twitches a little bit it begins climbing out very slowly and cautiously. Paul Bunyan snatches it up. Uh, ah! As, as you gotcha. snatch it up, it is not what you thought a puppet. Oh. Because damn, there's a lot of puppets. Yeah, it Paul is had... instead Tiny Tim, the young boy you met at the docks. Uh, oh, please, sir! Don't, don't hurt me. What are you doing in here? Sneaking around in this bookshelf. Uh, 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 my, my dad came to, to see old Scrooge. Uh, but, but, but we got separated, we did. How'd you get separated? Uh, he, he, he says he's, he saw our grandfather. And so he, uh, dad went in and told me to hide here in the bookshelf. Hide from what? He did. Uh, don't know, sir. Sir, just uh, strange happenings about. Paul Bunyan's kind of thinking he strokes his beard with one hand while holding Tiny Tim in the other. And he's got his little walking stick with him. Paul goes, yeah, I like that. I like that stick. Oh, th thank you, sir. Uh... You mind if I see it? I, I needs it, sir. I, I needs it to walk. Well, I know you needs it, but mind if I see it? Well, I, I don't know. He kind of holds it. You, you could tell it would be no trouble to take it from him. Yeah. I, I don't know, sir. I yes. really needs it. <laughs> take the crippled boy's cane. Oh, fine. I won't take it from you. Break it! <laughs> oh no, sirs! I needs it. Yeah. My dad says it was the most expensive pine he could get. Yeah, actually, on that, Paul's gonna do a little inspection. All right, you inspect it. It is a simple pine cane. Oh, ooh, this is this is this is the most he could get. Ooh, that's quite ooh, that's a not pine even, cane, boy. It's not even hickory. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, it's fine. Plus that's one. It's a, a very nice cane, Tiny Tim. It's not even Thank a plus sirs. one cane. Your dad did good. Thank you, sir. My dad's a good one. He is. Yeah, well, 
I guess I believe your story about you hiding in here. Did you see any ghosts, by the way? I didn't see the ghosts, sir. But my old Scrooge told me to hold on to this. And he, he holds up a strange book. Uh, this book has a bat with a skull and a snake slithering through its eye sockets. Ooh, ooh, tiny he says, this is... He says when he got back, or if, if help came to give it to him. Uh, so uh, are you the people I'm supposed to give it to? We're help, so. right, guys? Yeah, I think so. All right, here it is. And he hands it over. Can I get down, sir? Uh, you got you got any other treats for us? Uh, I got and he digs in his pocket. I got some corn cob. Grendel, you want a corn cob? And he has <laughs> one of the neurogeno vials and one of the vials of the dust of purity. In his hands, he he's like, you caught him mid, mid deck. He, he picks them up. You notice he doesn't have any pockets. <laughs> and so he eats them. I, I imagine like it's more like a chipmunk. He like puts them, he stuffs them in the sides. He eats them. <laughs> oh my God. Spit well, that out. I put take Tim, care of itself. Yeah, I put, I put Tiny Tim and I run, I run over here and I, I give him a little, you know, Smack Don't on the back, you, you know, like, it's, it's like a bird. He's fine, Bunyan. Let him eat all the glass he wants. You don't think I can bring that back when I need it? Tiny Tim hobbles oh. over. Wow. You're right, Grendel. Oh, I remember you. And he points at Grendel. You're that one which one looked at me from the roof. Oh, yes, my dear, 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 little crippled boy. Aren't you a darling? That's what my mom says. Oh, I'm, I'm sure she's a saint of a woman. She is. Now, and Grendel will come up close <laughs> And kneel down so that he's face to face. He's he's looking at Gretel and he's leaning on his cane because like that's how he's keeping himself up. What brings you here? I told uh Mr. Bunyan I was for me dad. And Grendel will look around. Where oh. is your father now? He said he saw Grandad and went through that door over there. Uh, which door, DM? Uh, this one. Interesting. Now, my dear boy. Hmm? This seems to me to be a very dangerous place. Please. Yes, Stay close to us. In fact, would you like to carry you, me to carry you upon my back? Oh, uh, maybe you should stay close oh, to that, Bunyan. That would be great, sir. I've always wanted to ride on top of a, 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 a I guess I shouldn't call you a monster. What's your oh, name? Oh, trust me, it's fine. Many, many have called me a monster. All right, Mr. Monster. But <laughs> he's, he's climbing on Grendel's back. We can move very fast when needed. It will yeah. almost seem like you are flying. Yes. And he climbs up. And Grendel, one thing that is uncomfortable is he uses his cane as like a support to hold himself up on your back. So he's like kind of choking you a little. <laughs> oh, he will see such sight. You and I. That sounds like fun, sir. Yes. My name's Tiny Tim, because I'm so tiny. And I my dad says Grendel. I'm the nicest boy around. You are such a snack. <laughs> uh, 
That's very nice of you, sir. A what? <laughs> Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, no. <laughs> As he's fighting on his back, uh, Bunyan, you do have that book. Uh, the boy gave you the book, and it is like this. Quite an interesting book. Um, you think you've heard the term before, a bestiary of sorts. Oh. Um, it has sketches of all sorts of uh, sort of ghouls and ghosts. Some of it is kind of illegible, right? It's written in Latin. Uh, but for the most part, you can get the gist of it. Hmm, Paul's, Paul's kind of interested in this book. All right. As you uh, guys leave the room, uh, what do you do? A Tarzan gets up from this chair next to Ebenezer and tries to act nonchalant. As you guys see, Ebenezer's pants have been pulled back up. <laughs> no, there's totally not like uh, who, crumpled soil. Pants down. There's totally not crumpled, soiled, uh, ripped pages from a book right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... oh, yeah. Maybe I stuffed them in his pants. And then pulled them yeah. Up. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he has morning wood. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's wrong with Mr. Ebenezer, sir? Oh, he's Tiny Tim sleeping. points out. I think he is dead. Oh, no. If he isn't, <laughs> he most likely will be by the end of the night. <laughs> no, and we're, 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 we're going to save him, Tim. We're going to save him. Do not cry. He's a bit sick. He's a bit do, sick. We're going to save him. Do not cry, Tiny Tim. Death comes for us all, <laughs> unless you are an immortal monster. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. It's a very nice thing to say. <laughs> Tiny Tim looks at the best in people, even when it's maybe not the best person to look <laughs> into. <laughs> uh... I'm going to try this door again. All right. As you go up to it, the key hums. And when it does, eventually it kind of reeks this, or reaches this peak, and you feel it go, Vroom. and that sort of spectral force is no longer barring the door. Oh, shit, guys. The key gets rid of the force. No. Yeah. You know that the memory unlocking thing is unlimited in this building. Yep. For every room. Yep. Um, well, I'm going to open the door. As you walk in, it reveals a large entranceway. Um, beautiful and ornate with taxidermied animals, um, sort of oriental statues, um, what looks like beautiful statues of uh, angels wielding swords, uh, a statue of a Medusa head, but Grendel. Hold the phone. As you come walking in, you recognize this, or at least the person in this depiction of the statue here in the middle. It's a Beowulf fighting a dragon. Without a word, and with Tiny Tim on his back. I'm going to take Tiny Tim off the map, and we just assume he's on, <laughs> on Grendel's back. <laughs> Grendel will climb up to the statue. As you do, Grendel, its eyes glow. Sir! Sir! Yes? Tiny Tim? 
is Tim. His statue's moving. Oh. And when you turn around, the Beowulf part of the statue has lifted its sword hilt and is swinging it at you. I need a deck save. Good. That means we can kill it. Uh, because of... Which one is it? It's... Danger Sense. Grendel does get advantage on this dexterity saving throw. All right. Nice. 23. As you whoo, jump out of the way of it, Tiny Tim, perfectly safe uh, to your avoidance. As this statue swings at you, um, the dragon part of it whirling around as it seems like uh, both of them are on defense. Their eyes glowing a spectral green. <laughs> now this is fun. Um, when that happens, you hear a voice echo out uh, into the room. The past is a troubling thing. We all must face it one day. It does not matter how good you are. Devils get wrapped in chains. And some may face the angels. And as this happens, those statues, the angels, begin to... <laughs> and start to move, animating. Oh. Into uh, these statues of Michael uh, are wielding swords and they turn to you all. And we're gonna roll initiative. You know what I like. That now you decided that you were gonna take a long rest. You just talked about it, then we kind of moved on. Haunted house night. How are you yeah. gonna take how are you gonna take a long rest, you know? Oh, luckily the statue's got a one. Oh <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'll I say as the statues are moving, the bigger statue is also moving. Oh, and Grendel rolled a one. What, what a... Oh, it's the animated angels. Ah, oh, bummer. All right. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Watson. All right. As Dr. Watson is going to run up and give a monkey fist to this, to this angel here. All right. I got a nine. A nine. You clunk clack off of the marble. I made an attempt, so bonus action. I will attempt to grapple it. Alright. It is going to attempt to fight against you. Let's see. It got a nine, so you are grappling with this angel as its emotionless uh, visage is rather unsettling. Um, but you are that currently enemy. grappling with it. Fox. Fox is going to uh, draw his rifle and shoot um, this angel. It boom! Just sort of deflects off of the mar uh, marble, shooting uh, sort of ricocheting off and Hitting uh, just one of the other statues. Okay, and then he is going to back up to here. And actually send Shaggy out of the room. Yeah. yeah. Old Paul. All right. Paul says... 
I was just to say, Paul says, Babe, I think we gotta go uh, smash some angel statues, so why don't you uh, get on that? Mm. And Babe runs <laughs> and then squeezes through the door. 50, 20. 25, 30. 30. 35. 40. <laughs> and then uh, gives this guy. <laughs> Let's see. Babe actually did go in a straight line pretty far. Uh, yeah, I'll say so. Babe, Babe did attempt to trample this guy. Babe was a straight line. Oh, you got a hit with its gore attack. So. Oh, all right. Let's try that. So it'll do 11 extra damage, which it does. So as you, Babe goes, mm, and charges in and just boom, smacks it shaking off a big chunk i'll say knocking off one of its wings Woo. good good and uh mr mr bunyan he he's like excuse me you dog you're always in the way aren't you and he uh, squeezes in again he's like sorry i'm always in the way uh uh and <laughs> he can't really get past babe uh, but he does take his hand and sort of nudge this person to the side, <laughs> Tarzan, to the south. Are you okay with well, I'll getting say, I'll say you're big enough you bit. can stand over uh, people. Oh, okay, okay. It's literally in his song, I would say. <laughs> All right. All right, fair enough. Could he, can he shoot over somebody? Yeah, he can. All right. Well, he's going to point. He probably can't at... shoot over Babe, though. Yeah. Okay. Then, then what he's going to do is he's just going to. He's just, he's got enough movement for this. He's going to come over here. He's like, sorry, Watson. It might be a little bit loud. And then uh, fire his shotgun <laughs> at this guy. All right. He just reaches over Watson. Sorry, blank, Watson. Blank. Boom. 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 Which is a miss. A miss, is it? <laughs> Takes just a huge fucking chunk out of the ground, nope. shooting shrapnel everywhere. Man, like, you need to you need to get that thing like repiped because I don't think it's I don't think it's hit once. Well, I I, I, I have a second cone? barrel. He got a musket board. <laughs> is it supposed He's to get the second cone and do an attack roll, or how does that work? Don't oh, I don't I don't, it, oh, I don't know about it being a cone. Oh, it just says so cone the way it works it. is oh, it's just there. Yeah, so the way it works is the attack rolls against every creature in the cone. Oh. But because he has to kind of lean over to shoot down and not hit Dr. Watson and Bay, it just hits him. So okay, it just cool. blasts the big hole. Okay, I totally He's basically forget. aiming down. Think of it like that. Okay, I will remember the cone for from now on. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, non definitely nonplussed about having missed he got he he pulls the trigger on the second barrel <laughs> and uh as his bonus and then sees if that does which boom, again boom, boom hits the wall get that thing re the wall. <laughs> just to <laughs> this huge chunk of the wall goes off it yeah, just he's... has a negative effect on firearms i guess yeah yeah well get him watson <laughs> or get him tarzan <laughs> <laughs> and ends his turn. Tarzan. Tarzan comes in wildly swinging his new sword. <laughs> and, uh... 19. 19 will hit. Five. Oh, actually, hold five on. I got a savage cool. attacker. Right. Savage attacker that. Rerolling it. For eight. Alright. Damage? As you poom, take off another big chunk of it. And then uh, it looks uh, like actually you'll take off one of its arms. So it's only holding the sword arm. I will spend my last key point to use flurry of blows. And I'll just kick at it a couple times. That's a miss. That, I think that's a hit. hit. Uh, for six and it's going to where is that? Let me hit the button. Doesn't matter. Six. It's not making a save. It's using the third one where it can't take reactions until the end of my next turn so I can back away safely. 
Uh, all right. I'll get. A, I'll nice. climb on top of this tiger statue. It's a, actually a taxidermy. Uh, Rendell, this statue is animating as it looks like the uh, the dragon and the Beowulf part of it are possibly going to attack you and Tim. What are we going <laughs> to do, sir? We're going to kill it. And Grendel, laughing, reaches up with his hand. It again grows to mon mon you, like monstrous proportions with the claws growing out of it, reaching to about two feet long. And it is going to swing recklessly at this Grendel's face. Not Grendel's face, that's my own face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grendel attacks at, himself. At, at, well, who knows? He, he's a crazy monster. Uh, <laughs> he, he's going to swing at... Um, yeah, fuck it. He's a barbarian. He's gonna swing at the Beowulf face, not the dragon. All right. Um. Make that attack roll. He will. Uh, again, it will be at advantage. Yep. Nice. One four will hit. Okay. Again, it's huge. The crack against it resounds with a humongous roar. Uh, 18. For As 18 you damage. Boom! Smack the head off of the Beowulf part of the statue. It just breaks it goes, off? Yeah, it just psh, breaks off and goes goo 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 rolling into the side. <laughs> he reaches back because claws get two, an extra attack to do a backswing across the face of the dragon. All right. He does not get the surprise attack and he does not get the hill strike, which I need to make sure to knock off. Okay, cool. But he does get to attack for a 19. 19 will hit. For seven. Seven as you boom claw into it. Uh, Grendel, you actually, uh, I guess now that you're closer up, recognize this dragon. It's it's the ancient dragon, it is that makes sense considering it's a Beowulf. No, um, I don't know I Grendel's don't... relationship to this dragon in, in this canon. But it's something. You at least recognize it. They know each other. Ah. Uh. All right. We would say that in the terms of the echelons of the ancient monsters, Grendel was a big baby monster, yeah. and the dragon was the was the the big bad. Yeah. Grendel but this was is just a statue. Uh, yeah. This is just some statue. Uh, is that so for Grendel? seven damage. Yeah, I don't think Grendel has any. He already did his bonus action to rage, so he is done. As the uh, the angels, uh, the animated angels, one of them is going to go over to Bay and uh, take a two swings of oh. its sword. Seventeen and seventeen. Uh both hit all right hitting for five and seven Oof. all right Ooh. poor guy this bay's getting cut up the statue that is grappled by watson it only has the one hand uh so it is just gonna swing the one time uh, but that's a 20 for four as i will try to use my reaction for watson ape instinct I do not get it. You do not. It just bonks you on the head with the hilt. You said for four? Yes. And then Grendel. I need you to make a deck save as that dragon bites down on you, trying to swallow you.
18. You poof, roll out of the way of it as it snaps down at you. Uh, not making any noise, It's but it is like moving its mouth as if it's roaring. Dr. Watson. As a bonus action, I'm going to second wind and regain five hit points. I have this thing grappled, yeah? Yeah. Okay. As a as a cool thing, I'm going to take out my revolver and I'm going to put my revolver underneath the chin of this thing and fire. Oh. Uh, for an 18, which will hit. For 14. As it. Boom! Blows the head off of this thing. The rest of the statue not able to hold itself together as it crumbles to pieces. And I'm gonna step on top of it. And then we're gonna action we're gonna action surge. As I'm gonna fire again. <laughs> Is that not disadvantage? Well I got so a that 10. Would be that first one would have been a disadvantage. They're both 10, so... All right. Second one, you miss. Your gun... Okay. Sergeant Fox. Uh, can I shoot from here, or would I be hitting Babe? Uh, you can shoot from here. Babe's oh. big enough that you can shoot underneath her. Okay, awesome. I'm going to shoot at that angel. All right. And maybe hit something this time. Does 20 hit? A 20 does hit. For 14. 14, so you boom, blow off a, a big chunk of it. I'll say a bit of its shoulder and most of its wing. Nice. And that'll be turned. All right. Next is a Bunyan. Bunyan calls out to uh, Grendel. He says, Is that thing coming alive? Meaning the dragon. Yes! But it won't be alive for long. Mmm. I like the way you think. And Paul Bunyan uh, pops off his, uh, his titan of timber and grows huge size, along with Babe. <laughs> in this tiny room. The ceiling's like cracking at this point. <laughs> Thank God this one's a, a big room because it's yeah. uh it leads to the second floor. But still, you feel like you're hitting you're hitting the max capacity on this one. Uh, and Babe, Babe gives this thing a might this angel a mighty shove. Uh. Babe has a legendary might. So I guess that means advantage on strength checks, if that's what this is. A uh, yes. shove on this on this guy. Okay. Let's see. Uh, athletics or strength? It is an athletics. Okay. 26. Yeah, 26 should be good. All right, let me roll its athletics just to determine something. Okay, so that's five, ten. Okay, all right, as you, boom, babe shoves it really far back. <laughs> and then and Paul, I guess, runs forward. Uh, yeah. Well, as best he can, right? He basically uh, leapfrogs over, <laughs> over babe. babe. There's even that much room and uh, gives it a good whack with his with his axe. It's going to miss as you swing. Oh, ooh, right to the Boom! wall. Boom! Putting a big dent in the wall. Yeah, <laughs> you leapfrogged over to... Yeah. You in break, fact, you also knock this statue, this Medusa <laughs> statue over, and it shatters. Oh, oh, like a bull in a china shop, eh, babe? And... Oh. Um, Let's see. Does that Titan the Timber use the bonus action? I believe it does. Yes. Okay, then that's turn. 
right, Tarzan. All right, Tarzan runs between uh, Babe and Bunyan's legs to get to the statue. <laughs> and he he swings with his Excalibur. <laughs> You're going to hit. Eight. Oh, eight. Clunk, taking another big chunk off the statue. And then I'm going to attempt to, to kick him. I'm going to sweep the leg. You're gonna kick him. And Seven more. I'm gonna you... use Ooh. Savage Attacker on that one as well, just to see if I can get any higher. All right. All right well, keep the seven. Well, All right. Do you keep the seven? I think you have to. Says I use, it says either, use total. either total. Oh, either total. Yeah. Sick. So 15 total damage that round, and that's uh, that started then. All right, Brendel. All right, uh, Grendel will go full out swinging on the dragon statue with his claw for 23. As you, boom, claw the front of it. Let's see that damage. All right. Ooh, I think I'll save that. For 11. All right. How do you want to do it? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Grendel, if I may, DM. Yes. Grendel will climb up the neck, almost spider-like, <laughs> of the dragon statue and grab it beneath its jaws and rip and tear its head off. Yeah, as you boom, there's a loud crunching throw noise. It, throw it down. Barely missing red. <laughs> it <laughs> boom lands in front of you, red. This crumbled bits. Yay, we did it, sir! Yes, my little crippled friend. We kill monsters because we are monsters. Yeah, we're monsters. Yes, we are. You're a monster, sir. Ha 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 So are you. Oh, Feel yeah. the power. Feel yeah. it. This is just like the never-ending story on Falcor. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it for Grendel? That is. Uh, actually, he has plenty of movement. Uh, okay. So, he does not presently have a climbing speed. Uh, so, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He'll move over here next to this guy, just to be here next to this guy. Uh, but uh, he'll move right here, uh, and that will be his turn. All right. As you do, uh, the angel statue, barely holding itself together, is going to swing at the one who hit it hard, which is Tarzan. Oh, Ooh, okay. The first one hits one hit. four. For, for four as it swings, barely able to keep itself together. Dr. Watson. As uh, Dr. Watson's going to weave in between Bay even between Paul Bunny and I'm not gonna try to I'm trying not to move your token. You're so <laughs> big. I Hang know. on, here we go. Cause I'm gonna go right there. And I'm just as I'm like sliding out, I just gotta fire the service revolver. Hopefully hoping to hit, even though I'm like right in close contact. Alright, let's see it. Dead. We got fourteen! 14 as you, boom, blow a hole in the wall. I blew 12 damage in the wall. Yeah. That ends That's me. Fox. Am I good to shoot here from here again? Um, I will say it is a disadvantage now that they are sort of bottled up like this. Okay. Um. This statue's gone, right? Yes. Yeah, I think it's just regular. Oh, we know there's a staircase. Yeah, yeah I'm going there, staircase. Man. 
Fuck so yeah. With, with an angle on it, I am going to. Yeah, I will say you don't shot. have disadvantage from this angle. What's that? I said you don't have disadvantage from this angle. Perfect. The 17 hit? 17 as you boom! 14. Hit it dead center. Psh, shatters to pieces. Damn, nice. these guns, these guns are like, they're like guns. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They're guns proper. <laughs> as the remaining pieces all lay broken and beaten. You guys have defeated this part of the manor. Freeing up the stairs. Um, and as you do, you faintly see what looks like the specter of a little girl float by and fade into the wall. Ooh. The ghost oh. of Christmas past. Over here on the first floor? On the first floor. Yeah, Grendel sees it immediately being right there. Ghost and of he'll... Christmas Pass, ready to be faced first on this night. Christmas Eve! <laughs> and that is where we will end tonight's session. Don't oh. they know that it's Christmas? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more creepy Christmas carols from the Adventurer's Landing.